Hello, I'm Dan Alford. Welcome to the Arc Specialties Weld of the Week. In this week's episode, we're going to start in the Arc Specialties Welding Museum because we're talking about a process that predates all arc welding. In this episode, we're talking about oxyfuel welding and cutting, a process that dates back to the 1800s. We have a couple of items relating to this process in our museum. First is an early example of an oxyacetylene cutting torch, and second is a acetylene generator. Back before you could buy acetylene in compressed gas cylinders, you actually made it yourself in your own shop by combining calcium carbide with water. So why am I talking about this old, outdated process today? Well, it's because it's not outdated. It's essential in industry even today. As you can see on this chart, you can use plasma up to around three inches thick. And beyond that, it's simply not economical. It's not even feasible. However, with oxyacetylene, I've personally cut up to 36 inch thick materials and the books say you can go to 60. But let me clarify that. I'm talking about steel only. There's a exothermic chemical reaction that occurs between molten iron and oxygen. And it's this chemical reaction that allows us to cut the very thick parts, like 36 inches and more. Exothermic means the process generates heat. And it's this heat that carries the cut all the way through thick parts. When you're cutting with plasma, unless you're using oxygen assist, all of the energy in the cut comes from the arc itself. By capitalizing on this chemical reaction and the exothermic energy generated, we're able to cut parts much thicker than you can with any other process. And you can also cut with great accuracy. Early in my career, we were cutting gear rack for these jack-up rigs out of 6-inch thick HY100 material. There's a couple of problems with this. First, HY100 is a very high strength material, 100,000 KSI yield. It was originally designed for submarine hulls when they decided they needed to go below 2,000 feet in depth. In addition to the metallurgical challenges, there's also the issue of dimensional accuracy. We're trying to make parts to gear rack tolerances, and you can actually do this with an oxyacetylene torch. And there's one other noteworthy advantage of oxyfuel over plasma cutting, and that's equipment cost. The cost of an oxyfuel torch is under $1,000, and yet the cost of a plasma cutting system can be $50,000 or more. Most of our robotic thermal cutting systems are actually plasma based, but I've given you a couple examples here of when you might go with oxyfuel cutting instead, and that would be when you're cutting thick materials, typically two inches or more, or if your equipment cost constraints won't allow you to purchase a plasma system. We're going to show you two different robotic oxyfuel cutting applications. The first was a large hemispherical vessel, and they needed to cut holes in this vessel, which was three inches thick, but they wanted to cut them on a bevel, so the apparent thickness was well over four inches. Obviously, we couldn't do this with plasma, and we had to get this thing running very quickly. The customer didn't want to buy a system, they wanted to buy holes, so we sold them holes. We deployed the robot to the field, and we cut these holes in this vessel in a matter of just a couple of days, and the tolerances that we were able to achieve exceeded their needs. In our second example, we're going to show you our collaborative snap cut cutting robot. Normally we equip this with a plasma torch, but in this case we're cutting two inch thick material on a bevel. This well exceeds the capabilities of plasma, plus this is generally an inexpensive application. So we wanted to demonstrate that we could use an inexpensive oxyfuel torch, in this case it's oxypropane, to make this cut. As you see on the video, the cut quality is good both on the bevel and on the conical cut. We can probably guarantee plus or minus one eighth inch accuracy, so neither the surface finish nor the accuracy is as good as high precision plasma, but it allows us to cut the thick parts you can't do otherwise. So sometimes when you combine the old processes with state-of-the-art robotic motion control, you can do great things. We look forward to posting new episodes of the Arc Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of Arc Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At Arc Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours. <laughs>